My name's Hannah with You Need a Budget, and today I'm here to talk about my own budgeting journey. To give you some history on myself, before I worked here at YNAB, I never worked a traditional job. Right out of high school, I started doing odd jobs for people. I painted rental homes, I farm sat, worked for a display case company on their website design. Once I graduated college, I ended up going into freelance videography and running a sole proprietorship. For the first time, I thought to myself, hmm, money is kind of hard. So I was hanging out with my mom and she said, why don't you try what I try? So my sweet, sweet mother sat me down and ran me through a crash course of how to use You Need a Budget. And I would love to sit here and tell you that I walked away that day with a whole new outlook on money, that I knew how to budget, that I had a successful budget. But unfortunately, not the case. Now, that was back in 2016. It's 2020 now, and I'm better at budgeting. Yeah, I budget. I budget. So today, I'm going to tell you all the ways I thought I was budgeting, but wasn't. Let's dive right in. <laughs> now, some of you are thinking, Hannah, stop. This is a joke. No. No. It's not. I know there are a handful of you who saw this sign and you went, oh, phew, I'm not the only one. Because I truly thought I have signed up for a budget. Therefore, I am probably more responsible than my peers. And that was enough for me. Now, the problem was it looked like I was being productive. And I was. Getting a budget, starting with YNAB, is one of the best things you could do for yourself. But I definitely found that I was using my YNAB account as an excuse to tell people that I was being responsible with my money while still not dealing with the core. I could say, Mom, yeah, I'm budgeting. I have a budget online somewhere. It's kind of like when you want to exercise, so you buy a treadmill, but then it just sits in your basement. It felt really good and it did nothing yet. Now my solution, if you're someone who has signed up and you're having a hard time getting past that hump, start with a buddy. Find someone else who will embark on this journey with you. It could be your spouse or your partner. Ask one of your neighbors. See if there's anyone else around you who doesn't have a budget yet that would like to start this journey with you. Because what you're doing when you're budgeting is learning a brand new life skill. Accountability is going to be so helpful to you in getting your budget up and running and becoming a budgeter. I dove right into the app. Most people are thinking, isn't that a good thing? Isn't that what you want as a company? Kind of. Would you put a teenager in a two-ton car without any driving lessons? Personally, no. And uh, I'm from Kansas. We actually kind of do that here. And yet that's what I was doing, hopping right into the app. The problem here is that I was totally uneducated on YNAB's method and was haphazardly using this app that I had no knowledge how to use. I had been using YNAB for almost two years before I learned some of its most crucial concepts. Four rules, like I before E. I had no clue how helpful setting goals were when using the quick budgeting tools, or how to move money with one click, or even just the best structure for my budget. I didn't even know you could use the plus and minus signs in the budgeted column. It has changed my world entirely. If you're in a similar boat, the solution is seek out some education. We at YNAB have tons of resources and materials to help all kinds of learners figure out budgeting and YNAB. If you're a visual learner, go ahead and work through some of our video courses. If you're someone who likes to read or needs instructions written down, check out our Ultimate Getting Started Guide. It'll take you through the entire process of starting your budget word by word. And if you're the more interactive type who likes to ask a lot of questions, go ahead and take one of our free workshops. You get to utilize live teachers, live demonstrations, live Q&A. It's all live. Woof, this is a long one. And next. I set my ideal budget, but I didn't change my lifestyle. The problem here is that my budget wasn't realistic, so I didn't execute it. It was almost as if the word budget was a noun and not a verb. It was a thing I had and not something I realized I had to do. Before I made a purchase, I never looked at my budget. I didn't make any adjustments to my lifestyle. I was simply tracking my spending, but I wasn't letting my results affect the way I saw my money. The solution here is to start your budget with realistic numbers and check your budget daily. I know daily is a big word, just two minutes a day. 
promise. Trust me, you will never get the hang of budgeting if your budget is impossible. For instance, if you're someone that's been spending $200 a month on dining out and you slash your dining out budget to $50 a month overnight, you are not setting yourself up for success. Cold turkey changes are very hard to sustain, and there's a reason why we have the habits we do. We've built them up over a long time, so changing those habits is not gonna happen overnight. So start by lowering your dining out category from 200 to 175, maybe 150 if you're looking for a challenge. Once you succeed in that month, then you can lower it even more. Similarly, if you've built 37 specific savings categories into your budget, you're not gonna be able to fund them all in the first month. Start with budgeting for just your basic needs, all the necessary expenses. Then as budgeting becomes more fluid for you, start adding in those less necessary categories. I wish I had better chalk handwriting, but that's a gift. Actually, that looks pretty good. What? Hannah, that's not, I thought you were supposed to use direct import. Yes, yes, you are. Oh, but we have a way of twisting things. Now the problem here is not direct import. That's an amazing tool, but I was remaining completely detached from the process. I was super hoping YNAB would do all the work for me. Did you know that you can use direct import and manual transactions and they will match up? Because I did not for a second, a long second. The solution is just manually enter those transactions in all of your out and about categories. When you enter a transaction manually, you can immediately see how that affects the rest of your budget. Then all of your decisions made from then on out can be fully informed. Some of you are thinking, oh no, won't that manual transaction double up with that direct import transaction? <laughs> no, no, because YNAB is brilliant. YNAB sees the two and says, hey, guys, you're the same. And they link together. So now in my categories like clothing, dining out, fun money, miscellaneous, I always enter those transactions manually. Direct import rolls it in. The two meet. They are linked. We're good. Now I'm super in touch with my budget and I can make way more informed decisions. I think that's all I had to say about that. Now, I am hoping I get some homies with this one. <sighs> I just did not. Rule three, I just, I didn't even, I just, I didn't get rule three. The problem here is I just spent money that I quite literally did not have. Now, remember earlier when I said I never referred to my budget before making a purchase? If I wanted something and I didn't have money in that category, slash let's be real, I wanted something and I didn't even check the budget, I just bought it. Then later, when that red number shows up, I'm like, all right, where can I cover this overspending? Where, where can that money come from? So at first you can play the game and just take from groceries and take from gas and take from clothing, even though clothing is the main category I overspent in. But then after a while, you see those red overspending numbers and the only categories you have left are electricity and rent and water. And you can't take from those because you gotta pay those. So here's the solution to this problem. Uh, learn what rule three actually is, okay, Hannah? Before willfully overspending in a category, analyze your entire budget and decide first where you're gonna pull that extra money from to roll with the punches before you make that purchase. At YNAB, we call this finding the money first. You can totally roll with the punches if you're pre-evaluating your budget and deciding where you're gonna pull that money from. I did not. I thought roll with the punches just meant I'm gonna buy these shoes and I'll figure it out later. But then the only categories that had money left were things I couldn't pull from. Utilities, rent, internet bill. When you're finding the money first, this creates a sense of awareness and of willful sacrifice. You are saying to yourself, I, Hannah Markley, do solemnly swear to spend 20 less dollars on clothes this month so that I can go to that speed dating event. Or wait, whoa. <laughs> What, what did she say? I don't, I don't do that. You're saying to yourself, I can get that power tool, 
but I'm gonna have to stretch the groceries we already have until the end of the month. Looking at your budget and predetermining where you're gonna pull that money from before you just willy nilly make a purchase, Hannah. Now, I'm gonna give you guys a little bonus tip. Aha. This is the way my brilliant coworker taught me to structure my budget and it has helped a lot. My budget has five category groups, fixed, flexi, savings, wish list, and wish farm. We're not going to worry about the last two today. First, we have our fixed category group. Every expense you have that is exactly the same amount every single month goes in the fixed category group. My phone bill, my renter's insurance, my tithing, my internet bill, my student loans, and my rent. What I do is at the start of the month, I fund every single category in the fixed category group, and then I close the category group. I, I, what's this called? I collapse it. Because if those categories are the exact same amount every month and I funded them, then I should never be taking out of those fixed categories. So I collapse the whole category group so that I'm never tempted to take away from those things. Your second category group is flexi. This is where I put all my categories where the amount might change from month to month. I actually keep my utilities in the flexi category because I live in Kansas and my utilities vary greatly from month to month. Yesterday it was 64 degrees and the Chiefs won the Super Bowl. And today it's snowing, so. This is also the category where I keep car fuel, clothing, coffee, dining out, fun money, gifts, groceries, home improvement, my dog, miscellaneous, personal training, sundries, and makeup. Because technically any of these categories I could take from them and if I couldn't fund them that month, it'd be fine. Well, not utilities, but I keep those under control. For instance, I do not need to spend this full total on my dog every month, but I do. Dining out, I can always stop doing. I can always stop buying coffee. As you can see, these are all the categories where I don't actually need money in them to make it through the month. Therefore, they're flexi. The third category group is savings. This is where I keep auto repairs, Christmas, travel, a wedding fund. I try to keep this category closed because I want these categories to build and build. I don't want to be tempted to take money from them. So by keeping all my flexible categories in one place, I always know which categories I can look at if I do need to roll with the punches. For instance, my dog just developed some kind of bacteria and I needed to buy her antibiotics. So I just canceled one of my personal training sessions, got $25 back and put that toward her medication. This method makes rolling with the punches so much easier and I'm so grateful to my friend who taught it to me. Well folks, I truly hope my rough and very transparent budgeting history is able to one, encourage you and remind you that you are not alone, two, help you put a name to your struggles, and three, hopefully provide some practical insight and ways to combat your own struggles. Budgeting is a skill to develop and developing any new skill is challenging. But like the old saying goes, Give a man a fish and he can eat for a day. Teach a man to budget and he'll have a very specific allotted amount each month for how many fish he can buy. And if he buys too many fish, well, he'll figure it out. <laughs>